Father, we thank thee again for another Wednesday. We thank thee, Lord, for your goodness here, Lord. We thank your amazing grace. We thank the Lord. We sing the old songs of Zion, and we thank thee for the men and women who have penned them over the years, penned these songs from our heart, Lord, penned them when they realize that we read the lines between the lines, realize men and women who had experience of thy wonderful self, of thy wonderful love, of thy wonderful mercy, of thy wonderful, amazing grace. So accept of our thanks to you, Lord, this evening. We thank thee for the people of God being here. We thank the people of God being in Zoom. We thank the Lord again. We have another opportunity to come before God and thank our God and listen to what you're saying, Lord, but later on to thank thee in prayer and petitions, Lord, as we lift our voices and hearts to the great God of glory. So, Father, we just want to thank whatever you have done. We thank thee, Lord, for the way you have blessed us. We pray for every dear saint in Zion and every dear faithful believer, Lord, every dear faithful pastor, you'll bless them, you'll be with them, you'll strengthen them, you'll watch over them, you'll protect them, and you'll cause your face to shine upon them. Bless us now, we pray to you, Lord, in these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Looking at a very well-known verse in First John chapter 3, I have touched on this quite a number of times. First John chapter 3. Before we start, Lewis, is my mic too high or too low? Is it all right? right. We'll look at verse 1, especially verse 1. We'll read from First John 3 and 1. Just give me a few moments to uh, go into the translation you'll be using. There we are. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. But therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to look at the Father's manner of love. And what we'll be doing most of the night will be mostly scriptures. I'll be speaking of an awful lot of scripture. I don't know if I'll get through them all, but it's mostly scriptures. I'm not even going to tell you many points of God because you'd be turned away and say, oh, John, we we'll never get that done. But anyway, We'll just try as we go through. And first of all, we're looking at start at this, behold what manner of love. I just like to look at the manner of love, the various manners of love we see in the scriptures that the Father has bestowed upon us. We know it says that the manner of love, that we should be called the sons of God. And the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. If you just look at another verse in 1 John 4, 8, 1 John verse 4, sorry, 1 John 4 and verse, verse 8, he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. That little sentence at the end, that little, these few words, for God is love. The essential part of God's nature and attributes that God is love. Although it could say God does loving things, God loves his people, God loves this God, but it says God is love. You know, never was a more declaration made than this, that God is love. A few short words, God is love. You know, in the darkness of this, the darkness of this world of sin and the sorrows which has come upon the human race, which are many over the centuries, amidst the hatred all over this world, which is much, 
This little verse, this light shining forth amidst all the hatred from the hearts of men, all the pent-up hatred we see when nation against nation, black against white, white against black, this terrible hate that's which caused millions to die, this little verse says, God is love. You know, I think of broken families, and there are many of them, broken marriages, many of them, broken friendships, and even broken bodies. These three words, God is love, is surely the answer. And God showed his love in various ways. And the first way God shows his love, we're told, is in Ephesians 2 and 8, which, another, which is another very well-known verse. And God shows his love in salvation. He shows his love to the world in his creation and upholding all things by the word of his power. He shows to the world his love, his concern, in him we live and move and have our being. But he shows his love and salvation revealed through the scripture. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, the unmerited favor of God. Why? Because God is love. This wonderful God, this great mighty God, this eternal creator, and he threw out a word of immense, God is love. And God shows our love through his wonderful salvation that Jesus Christ died for sinners. And some of the songs we sang there spoke of that, his suffering, his agony, as he came into this world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, God is love. And another point is God shows his love through sustaining us, not only in our salvation, but through sustaining us. In Colossians 1, in Colossians 1, the wonderful scriptures, and probably the first 17, 18, 19, 20, and 22, I think it is, will come up in a moment. God shows his love through sustaining us. And we're reading from, and it says in verse 17, of Colossians 1, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. In verse 19, for it pleased the Father that him that in him should all fullness dwell. And having, verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, what are there be things in earth and things in heaven? In verse 21, And you that were sometimes alienated in enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he hath reconciled. In verse 22, In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. Is this not wrong? God is love. He saves us. He sustains us. He keeps us. First Peter 1 and 5, speaking of keeping us and guarding us, it says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation to be revealed in the last time. The very faith he gives us, the very faith he gives us for salvation, the same faith he uses to keep us. And we trust in God by keeping our faith in him, his wonderful person, his wonderful word. Yes, God is love. And another thing we get in First Peter 1 and 8 as well, we'll get this verse, we love him although we have not seen him. That's tremendous. We love God although why we have never seen him. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. We have never clapped eyes on him physically and like that. And 1 Peter 1 and 8 says, In whom having not seen you of, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. In verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Peter is saying here, oh, we love him. 
because he has put our, his love in our hearts. He has given us his love. Oh, hallelujah, we love him in salvation. We love him because he has kept us. We love him the way he's worked after us. Do we deserve this love? Do we really know again, bring him? I'll be speaking in many scriptures tonight. Romans 5 and 8, it says another point I'll bring out. Do we deserve this love? God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, how God showed his love. Oh, how God showed his love in a very remarkable manner. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet his enemies, Christ died for us. What kind of love is this that gave itself for me? I am the guilty one, yet I go free. So what will him in songs of fellowship says. And you know, he goes further he redeems us, he saves us, he keeps us, he looks after us. And in John 14 and 2, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking about, speaking to the disciples, speaking to us through the word of God. And it says, he loves us so much by going to prepare a place for us. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, there ye may be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and save you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. That's amazing love. That's amazing grace. Oh, that little word from First John. These few words are immense. God is love. We've got to grasp that something of this love if we can even grasp a fraction of the love of God, what God has done for us, what God has done, He saved us, He keeps us, He looks after us, He protects us, all because God is love. You know, He showed that love by His humility. He showed that love by His humility. We look at Philippians 2 and 7, and it says that very well-known verse, and I'm giving you very well-known verse to tonight, but made Himself, of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a servant who was made in the likeness of men. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the eternal God. God manifest in the flesh his love by his humility. And when we turn to John 13, we see something of that. In John 13, verse 4, speaking of the feet washing, it says when during the, during the time when, when they were, just before the Lord's Supper, just before that time, it says he rises from supper, just at supper time, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a child to, and girded himself. You know, that was about the time they had been arguing about who should be greatest. They were arguing the disciples who should be the best, who should be the highest, who should have the best position and the glory to come. And Jesus takes a towel, girded himself, and what does he do? He see an act of humility and love. And after that, in verse 5, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Oh, he takes the place of the servant, Jesus Christ, the mighty God, manifest in the flesh, washes the disciples' dusty feet. Oh, God is love. What a tremendous, indeed, Savior we have. What a tremendous God we have. These three little words that are meant, God is love. Know when you read John 7, when you turn to John, the Gospel of John, rather, the Gospel of John, chapter 7. Sorry, 17, 17. And we'll read a few verses. We'll see something of the high priest, priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was he praying for? Future believers. For us, praying for his own people, he was praying for future believers. Before the crucifixion, before all that, we were on his mind. 
before the crucifixion, before the terrible trial, we, even during that time of his trial, we were on his mind. And if you read from verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine. Verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them through thine own name, whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those whom thou hast gavest me I have kept. None of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be filled. And now I come to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Listen to this. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil. Sanct verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. You know, it's amazing. The Lord Jesus Christ praying for us, speaking about the church, it was those who would come. The amazing love of God, God is love. You know, we think of that love, we think of their sanctification, we think of our separation, we think of their salvation. But you know, there's another point I like to look at, is we've got to be imitators of this love. We've got to be imitators of this love. And the Apostle Paul writing in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, he says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. That's verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And verse 2 he says, Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Oh, what a savior. Walk in love. Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says, You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy might. Of the show the love, of the imitators of love, and another point in 1 John 4 and 11 tells us what to love the brethren. What to love the brethren. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. I'll say that verse again. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If God, who is so much exalted above us, and if he loves those, that's us, who are so unworthy of that love, we ought to love those who are on the same level as ourselves. If God should stoop from the glory to love us, and we are in such a level below him, then John's saying, look, if God so loved, we ought also to love one another. And that's how we bring the love of God in our heart to others. And also to love the house of God, of to love the place of prayer, to love fellowship with God's people. Reading from Psalm 84 and verse 2. Psalm 84 and verse 2. Now I know I'm not giving you much time to look at it, but I've an, I've an awful lot of scriptures the Lord I felt put in my heart for tonight before we come to prayer. Psalm 84 and 2. My soul longeth. Yet even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Verse 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the tents in the doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents in the tents of wickedness. A friend, old friend of mine who is dead now, is a professional musician. He was a very good musician, brilliant actually, unbelievably good. And when God saved him, he felt he couldn't go back to the business he was in because of the environment he was playing in the CD clubs and all that. And that's the verse, that little verse God gave him. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. No, being in God's house 
is more to be desired than anywhere else. Do you love the house of God? Do you love coming to the house of God among the people of God? Being in God's house, having fellowship with the saints, surely is more desirable. And we also share our love of prayer. That's another point I'd like to We share our love of prayer, Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Verse 13, and ye shall seek me, and find me when ye set, shall set for me with all your heart. And now, as we go on and on with these lovely scriptures, remember as we started off by God is love. We looked how God loves us, and because God loves us, we ought also to love one another. Now, this speaks of fellowship. This speaks of loving the house of God. This speaks of loving the sinner. It speaks of loving the sinner, of loving the people of God, of loving prayer. And Ezekiel 18 and 23 says this very well-known verse, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord? and not that he should return from his ways. In Second Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but his long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. All we should have love for the sinner. You see, for God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Not only God's people, we should love the sinner, love to those who are far from God. This is what we'll be doing later on. we we'll praying for people. We'll be praying probably for the unconverted. And one other point, and I'll probably finish at this one. Loving the sick. Loving the sick. In Matthew 14, 35 to 36. Read 35. It says, And when men of that place had knowledge of him, that's of Jesus, they sent out into that country round about and brought unto him all that were sick. They had a compassion. They brought all that were sick to the feet of the Lord. And that's what we do in prayer when we pray for the sick. We bring the sick to the Lord in the house of God in your own prayer time. You know, Gary started a little meeting a way back and it's still going on in Zoom when a Sunday afternoon we pray for the sick. We pray for names that are brought before some sick, some who are very ill, and these names are brought before us, and we pray for them, just like those who brought the sick to Jesus. We come in prayer, praying for those who are sick, and praying for those who are very sick. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. And then it says, God is love. Not world out there have no time for God to sin willfully. Yet, 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 we still live in a day of grace. God is love. That's amazing. We still live in a day of grace. And the situation gets worse. The blasphemy gets worse. But we still live in a day of grace. God is willing that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. So these three little words, God is love. And we come in a few moments' time to pray. And we'll be praying for the church, the house of God, which we love. Praying for God's people. Praying for the unlovely, the unlovable. Praying for the sick as we come to this general prayer meeting. I pray these few thoughts. I know I, I had to push it all and I wanted to get every single verse out. I think there was 20 odd verses I, I read out there. I spoke a wee bit about them, but it's mostly just reading the scriptures. You see, it's what the Word of God does to your heart and my heart. So these are three little words. God is love. And we give God thanks for these things. I'll put my glasses on now so that I can see your face. There we are, I can see your face. I couldn't see faces, it was all blurred because I'm, eyesight is getting worse. I've got to use my other glasses all the time. God is love. 
just stand and be amazed. Be amazed at that. God is love. Behold, what manner of love. Manner of love. I try to go through some of them. You could probably say, oh, what about this love, John? What about that love? I know that. But the manner of love. And let's now come. We're now a time of prayer. People were self, people in Zoom. So let's come to the great God of grace, the great God of love. Let's come in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee and praise thee for who you are. We thank thee for the amazing grace of God. We thank thee for these wonderful scriptures. Lord, that by grace we are saved through faith, that not of ourselves, a gift of God. And we thank the Lord for that little verse in 1 John where it says, God is love. Lord, we stand amazed. And we just look and we say, Lord, why did you love me? I don't know, Lord, but you love us. And sure, Lord, that love should be manifested. That love should be manifested in our life, the way we love the brethren, the way we love the unconverted, the way we love the house of God. So, Father, we thank thee for this evening. We pray again for our church. Pray you'll bless every believer. We pray for those in our midst who need prayers for their sicknesses, Lord Jack. Thank thee for him, Lord. He keeps coming. Alison, again, Lord, the day two saints carry, we could probably say, quite serious illnesses, Lord. We pray you'll bless them, you'll touch them. Tom go feather is another one, Lord. We pray for him. We think of Margaret. Great Lord, we think of Margaret. Uh, we pray for her, Lord. We pray you'll bless her. We know she's got a, quite a, an illness, Lord. And we know there's so many more. We thank those who have prayed for over the past year or so or months. We pray, Lord, you'll move in power. And we pray again for work in the open air, Lord, as we go and tell others about the unsearchable riches of Christ. So watch over us, Lord. Each and every dear believer, every saint, pray for the missionaries, Lord. We thank for these dear people who go, think of those in India, Lord, who labor away in that orphanage, bring the gospel to these children. Think of Joanna and Ron, Lord, over in the Philippines, likewise, Lord, amidst all that disease and illness that they see, Lord, we thank thee they're wavering away, and we thank thee for MAF, Lord, likewise, taking that gospel and doing very practical work, Lord, over in, the, over in Africa, Lord. And Lord, the work amongst the Jewish people, Lord, we thank thee for that work, the evangelism. Oh, Lord, fit when we... When Christians and missionaries go, Lord, they go with the love of God in our heart. Help our love to increase, Lord. Bless us now, we pray thee. In Jesus' name, amen.